Geschichten mal aus den 50er und 60er Jahren gehört haben. Da gab es ordentliches Angepöbel. Fand ich ziemlich beeindruckend. Aber was macht der Bundestag eigentlich sonst so die ganze Zeit? Hi, good evening. This is your English translation team. My name is Andre and your name is... Uh, my, here, here's my... Tony? And uh, this talk will be about um, the language used in the German Parliament, with, to which we refer to as the Bundestag. And uh, those are two speakers that have done an interesting interpretation. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. We're always a little bit nervous because there's always lots of people. So I like to imagine all of you naked, but I can't see you, so you can all get dressed now. From me to us, how did society and language change in the speeches in the German Parliament, the Bundestag? We want to introduce the tool that um, Zeit Online, which is a big newspaper, has um, built up. And then we look at some examples, like um, the right-wing party, climate debate, how people curse at each other, and then we'll get, we'll, you'll be able to be, be more active. Okay, thank you for your interest in politics and plenary debates. It's not very, really, it's not really something that we expected because the Bundestag TV, which is basically a TV station that has all the speeches from the Bundestag, there's not a lot of people looking there. And um, there is actually, we have um, put all these parliamentary debates into a database from 1949. And now we basically have a search engine where we can put in a term and this will show how often it was, um, how often this term was used and also when it was used. For now it's just frequency, but you can actually see trends and tendencies of what ha happens. If you're interested in data and numbers, there's a lot of protocols from uh, 19 election periods and we have all of them as a txt file and the latest ones are xml so if you want to play with it yourself you can just play with it go nuts and we thought to demonstrate we'll use a term that everyone knows internet at least everyone in this room should know it the internet this is how it looks you put in a word and you get a graph D so on the lower axis there's the years and then there's um, basically how mentions per hundred thousands per year. Now we have 20 uh, mentions per 100,000 words and it's important to do this relative. Now in the internet is actually used quite a bit, it's mentioned quite a bit compared to other debates. Now just to have a look at what you can see. Stop. There's something else I want to show you. This is the very first mention of internet. Telebanking, teleshopping, also telecommunication, fax, the internet. All of that might not determine the parliament's people's people, people's lives, but it does determine um, everyone's life and also business life for everyone. Now, that's, this was not very prophetic, to be fair. Okay, now let's look at the time. So, the mention that we saw was in December 1994. The Internet TM existed for a while, ARPANET, which was originally militarily and maybe a little scientifically, is a little bit older. But <coughs> it was even made public before. There was the first browser even, Mosaic. And here you can see what did people talk about. So we looked at all the protocols. What was this peak? And at this point, in the year 2000, it was about applications, basically. So like um, mobile internet banking, uh, the internet age, 
parliamentary uh, members ta talk more and more, debate more and more about how do people use it and how what do we need to make available to people. And then there's nothing for a while. And then 2008, 2009, what happened there? Do you know? Okay, 100 points for uh, Sensursula. Uh, and the next one? Does anyone know? Sensursula was the German minister that tried to um, stop the internet. And where the first time came up, access to internet is a basic right. And 2011 was the... Um, was basically the um, the German court, which said federal court, which said we cannot actually just um, steal the internet from people. This is something that's like against basic laws, basic laws, basic rights. Be, be careful. There's um, a, a bit tricks. In actually, there's quite a lot of traps around. We're gonna look at some here. Why did we not start talking about Russia before? Ah, uh, the older ones will remind... Oh, Soviet Union. Now, if we include Soviet Union with Russia, we get a completely different picture. Wow, Cold War, you know. And then Russia didn't... was that strong. Now, look at Russia alone, and now look at with the Soviet Union, puts it into relation. But... There's a hole in the middle. What happened there in the middle? Here, when between Soviet Union and Russia, wh what happened there? Where are the boomers? <laughs> oh, there was, yeah, there was a community of former Soviet... It, oh, there they are. They had their own name. In German, we call it GUS. <laughs> ah. Yeah, you see the problem. We're always talking about the same thing. And then, actually, in German, we had a, a reform of writing, and Russia was written differently before with SZ, and now it's written with double S. So, when you do your searches, be very careful. That, for instance, hate and love. Also, hate is spelled differently before the, the reform, the orthographical reform. and. Uh, what happened with love? Why suddenly out of nowhere? Look, this is love. Oh, this is the activity. This is in German, love and dear is the same word. So they say, dear chancellor, dear colleagues, which in German translates into the same word, liebe Kollegen, such as love. So you got to be careful when you when you analyze. Uh, and try to find out what kind of words uses. You have more anonymous anonyms. Oh, okay. Here's a here's a first topic: the rhetoric of the right. We looked at what is extreme right. How often is the word extreme right or? Alt-right, again, there's different kind of words. You see on the top here, well, everything we put in one. And there's been stiff several peaks. Uh, different, um, different um, uh, events, the, uh, the, the bomb in Hoyerswerda and the attack in, in, in other Eastern German countries. And you see where the spikes come up, that's when, again, Per hundred thousand words mentioning. Oh, a Völkisch is uh, a typical right extreme word, meaning the people, and uh, and there's a combination of different. German is very different, very exact in using different words. So we sum them up together, and the Völkisch word comes a lot more often than right extreme, because. Probably, uh, when the right came up, the AFD, its first um, f president, Frau Kepetri, tried to positively position the word popular or völkisch. 
Oh, here is refugee. Uh, there is another point. This is refugees. Uh, be careful. Um, the first refugees were repatriated Germans from the former e Eastern territories, and we called them Vertriebene, displaced persons. Um, so you have to put in displaced persons to take that up. You remember what that was in 55? When there were the boat people in the 80s here, in the, in the middle? You remember the boat people who fled Vietnam when Vietnam fell in in, in asterisks to the to the communist regime. Um, there were the first that we called Flüchtlinge, which are refugees. And AFD, when the AFD entered the Bundestag, refugees snapped up. That's the big peak in 2015. And another one connected with the AFD, green, left, left, green, n not the Versift is un untranslatable, shitty, basically. But you don't say that in the parliament, but it happens. Uh, but nobody mentioned that, the combination of left and green. Yeah. Only the AFD was the first to use that combination. Oh, fake news, yeah, or Lügenpresse, which is lying media. There we go, again, with AFD. Ah, but there's a peak before that, in 2010, without the AFD. Uh, AFD doesn't create its own words, sometimes it just takes what is already there. The first mentioning of lying press is a chap. Thomas Bares from the CDU CSU, citing the Russian president Erdogan, Turkish, uh, Turkish. Turkish, Turkish Erdogan, who um, calls his own media lying media. So here comes fake news in itself. There's Mr. <coughs> the 45th president, let's not call his name, uh, Mr. Trump, and he brought the fake news also to the German parliament. Oh, then you have this typical word of old parties or the classical parties. That's another right-wing word versus we are the new people, we are the new parties and the old parties. And the 85, 1990, it wasn't the right, it was the Greens that tried used the old parties versus us. Actually, it was Shealy who mentioned it, left, who then became a uh, member of um, the government and changed to the CDU. Oh. Okay, we'll talk about environment and climate. Kai. Okay, so there's a lot of nice terms that we can look at and that can show us interesting stuff. One of them is climate protection environmental protection. It's not actually a new topic that we sometimes like we sometimes think. But what is interesting is that it was discussed, debated in a different, on a different term because it used to be environmental protection, which is the blue line on here. And now we kind of have this idea of climate protection because we kind of think that environmental protection is something different right now. And environmental protection has become global, whereas climate protection is also more like local and now we basically only mention climate protection usually okay this is something that I, the peaks i also find very interesting in 1983 the greens are um first in the parliament and we can see that they are sort of agenda setting in this so they managed to make environmental protection big and then the second one um, is the UN climate report from 20 2007 um, that basically stated for the first time there's human-made climate change. And it was basically the first time that um, the scientific consensus was published to a general audience. Now, now let's just talk very shortly about 
sort of like there's peaks and lows. What debates are big? What debates are small? Let's take a look at climate change and also compare to refugees. Then we can see that there's that it's very different. There's a different scale. Now, climate change is very important, but actually, the refugee debate was one of the most most important debates ever. <laughs> of course, we have to kind of um, restrict what we can actually say because um, we only have limited way of saying because um, the, we only use some words, but refugees. They, they were just such a huge topic. Climate change really doesn't matter compared to it. And now let's look at something that's been important for all throughout. Um, joblessness, exactly. Um, and again, climate change is not important compared to um, joblessness or like people not having jobs. And then let's take education, which is also always important. We're lucky. We think that's a good thing. We talk about um, making it more federal and not having all the different states be responsible for it the way it is right now. There's always a big debate about that. And what's one of the largest debates? What do you think? The economy. <laughs> And money. The, part, the parliament is talking more and more about money. Now, just to have an idea of the scales of things, so that you see what exactly is happening. 60, 80, it's just really, really a lot. So these refugee debates really par dominated parliament for a while. Now, let's talk about environmental protection and environmental damages, exactly. Uh, these are different terms for um, damages to the environment. For example, forest dying. Yeah, Waldsterben. In the 80s, there was a big debate about sour rain. And then there was a lot of more talk about Waldsterben and about the effects of Waldsterben instead of the causes of Waldsterben. So uh, first it was what do we see and then what happened and then suddenly it wasn't important anymore because the forest had already died so who cares. But there's also some confusing things like Rhine. Why was there such a big debate about the Rhine in the 1980s and a couple of other peaks during other times? And we might think well Rhine it might be a flood. But actually, floods don't really explain this. Just a couple of those peaks. Instead, this one large peak in the center in the 80s, we don't really have an explanation. But then we googled a little bit and we found the Sanders catastrophe. It was a big chemical explosion, chemical um, ca calamity, and a lot of chemical stuff went into the Rhine and we suddenly had a lot of fish dying and this was sort of what led to these debates about the Rhine suddenly and then something quite interesting Chernobyl which of course is quite easily explained um, Chernobyl was a the, a huge um, atomic catastrophe in the 80s uh, and then fear Fear and Chernobyl are sort of related. Yeah, so it seems that uh, fear and Chernobyl disaster correlate. And um, other things like atomic energy debate, this it also seems to have relations to fear. But do you have any idea where the first peak of fear, which is the orange line here at the beginning of the 80s, what was that? What did people really fear at that point? Any ideas? Well, yeah, so we have nuclear missiles, is that? Yeah, okay, so you have the NATO, uh, some NATO debate. Um, uh, and so, as well, having certain, uh, having atomic nuclear missiles on German soil. And you see this also peak the Chernobyl again. So this kind of correlates with uh, fear. And so 
people didn't forget that uh, atomic missiles have something to do with uh, atomic uh, explosions. So um, yeah, these are some have been some examples how you can compare uh, terms uh, to use the, this tool to understand when which debates have been uh, done and when they didn't appear. So, but now we're going about uh, like cursing at each other in a like mannered way, ins mannered insults. Um, so insults, well-mannered insults, yeah. So at the end you have uh, a list of all the insults we looked for, so it's always funny. And uh, so of course we look for insults, uh, but not not only. So we have like inter. So there are strict rules for um, for for interrupt. So you have like usually you have like interrupt. If if you call someone asshole, um, then you will get uh, a call to order, and you have to apologize for it. Um, and if it's really bad, you even have to pay money for it. So this is the very strict rules. And now let's just check those like uh, these these. Call to order. So how many call to orders have been there in Parliament? So you see at the beginning, um, it was rather uh, silent. Then you have the Green Party. Suddenly it, it, it peaks. And then again it uh, it went rather calm. And then uh, the AFD joined, and suddenly you have a peak up again. And there's a second thing that's like uh, interruptions. So the interruptions of the Green Line. So if someone talks, the opposition usually can like uh, interrupt and mostly they don't agree. They also like uh, protocoled um, by the parliament writers and they say what was in this interruption and we check this as well. So you see it's a similar uh, line, um, the green one for of both sides. So. And one more about like the climate in the in the parliament. This is about uh, just laughing. So what about laughing? Laughter. Yeah. So this is not funny laughing. This is uh, uh, usually those people who make the protocols say if it's it's mocking people. So when someone says something and then someone else is mocking them and just laughing at them. So only then they will like protocol their laugh laughter. Not not otherwise. Otherwise, like it's. Uh, Heiterkeit, um, that's just funny th stuff, yeah, so funniness. Um, this is, if this is like, uh, it looks like it's getting less and less funny at the at the parliament, as you can see. And there are some classics uh, for uh, insults. So now think about what will you think about classic insults. Uh, well, and the, the I think the result is surprising. Okay. Pretender is like the first one, which I think is a liar, or like the hypocrite. Yeah, like it's liar, which is like the the female uh, liar. Lügner is male. Lügner is female. Idiot. Um, and now is something that doesn't is not in my active uh, in my r in the use. I use uh, maybe dick, but that's a bit. Uh, tyke, ruffian. It's just some kind of ruffian. That's yeah. And Flegel, which is also a bit ruffian, Depp, which is uh, just like a, a rather a dull person. Trottle is just like also, it's a bit like idiot. Also a dumb person. And then of course ass, asshole, assholes. So those are also of course in there. And if you say such things, even like hypocrite or liar, you can be called to order. And maybe even have to pay money for that. And of course, you don't want that as a member of parliament. But they're tricks. So how can you how can you do that? So Volker Beck said so. Um, if there's no call to order, if there were no call to order, Mr. President, in that case, I would uh, say that what the what the coalition is doing now is hypo hypocrisy. And so in that case, because he's talking around it, um, he doesn't get a call to order. Or uh, the king of. Um, calls to order, Herbert Wiener, um, he said, um, so there's something that this is not in the protocol because it was said after the end of the protocol, so you won't find this one. Um, he, he once said uh, to the German president, uh, excuse me, Mr. President, uh, you very sorry, but you're an asshole. Um, so in that case, um, in within the debate, yeah. Okay, so that's really hard to translate. Anyone any idea? Uh, so basically, the German small-minded person, bigot, is um, filled with he's, he's, he's filled with shit. Yeah, and 
you're a good example for that. Exactly. Um, yeah. So there's like two examples. One is like humbug. Incredible. And the other one is, oh, this can't be incredible. Uh, and we see that there ha seems to have been a change in terms just. Like they use this different terms for the same concept. So we'll talk about, so we have a couple of examples of how language changed and then things also changed. One of them is from... Uh, tele um, oh, the old, the old word for telecommunications was Fernmeldewesen. It's just a very German word for the same thing. Now they use telecommunication, which is the same word, but in the Latin origin, and it means digital communication. Yes. Okay, yeah. And then the, the thing that gave us our title, we changed from I and me to we and us, basically. Uh, so people don't, people in Parliament, they don't really say I anymore. Instead, they say sort of like we. So it might be the pluralis magistratus, which is basically the queen talks of herself as we. Uh, it used to be that before, uh, like that, like authors didn't write I. Instead, they wrote we. Sometimes in um, academic journals, we still have this as, a modesty. as a modesty, exactly. And why did something change? Well, because there's new forms. There's inclusive we and exclusive we. Extensive we, which we call Merkel we. We, which is like something that she has, um, she often used. We need to do something because usually it's not the person speaking that actually will do this, but instead it's more like talking about us as a general a construct. And this is something we call extensive we. We, and this is new. And this is why we see this kind of change happening. And it's not related to people suddenly thinking they're the Queen of England, but instead it's um, these new kinds of we. And it used to be like a slogan during an election that we, that they didn't know, do we actually capitalize we or not? But the inclusive we is actually capitalized. Okay, now terrorism. Of course, the peaks are pretty obvious. We have RAF terrorism, which is like left wing. RAF, PLO, and RAF. Exactly. And then like uh, Al Qaeda ISIS. But there's one other word that's kind of similar in German. And terror is actually, terror is. Uh, the word that basically means the same thing, but people now use it instead of terrorism. And terror, terror and terrorism are basically French words or come from the French. And some t terrorism is an ideology, whereas terror is sort of the effect it has on the people. But despite it, so some people figure terrorism is too sort of long and too complicated. So terror suddenly isn't something that um, describes a status or an action, but instead it's something concrete. So it's about the feeling that happens because of these the reason is uh, most likely that you talk more about it and it's just shorter um, and so it's what you use often has to be short and terrorism is just too much to say uh, so now let's say about climate change and climate catastrophes or climate change is green and climate catastrophe is in orange um, and you see that climate catastrophe is older and climate change is actually older. So when you had the ozone hole in the atmosphere, you see like climate catastrophe. So we see 
even if uh, climate catastrophe is the word, people do something about it because FCKV have been uh, abolished pretty quickly and there's something that does something for the climate so the ozone uh, well, hole is like closing and now we talk about climate change and not climate catastrophe and you see, yeah, maybe then we do something about it in 2050 so we see that language clearly has an effect uh, on what happens in the real world uh, so if it's a catastrophe and now you have like security scanners and not like yeah, okay. and here again you see like oh, climate change is like a, it's like a wish and we have a wish for bloggers and journalists please don't write climate change write climate catastrophe that's really better and more accurate <laughs> applause for that and i looked at a blog that talked about this and they talk about climate change and they have tools with which you can change uh, these one word so maybe you can just make it automatically that you always change climate uh, uh, climate change to climate catastrophe in their blog so to have more climate catastrophe and less climate change in the discussion again so now about ministers so the female and the male version um, so the blue ones are female in singular and plural and now you see that the orange one is the singular male version. So you see we have more ministers, more male. Hmm? Yeah, the plot. So the orange plot is... So 1961, you suddenly you have one female minister. So that's the peak in the 60s. One uh, minister of... Uh, she was minister of health. And suddenly they started talking about that. And fortunately this is like uh, improving over time so um the, the the female plural form can be used now for both men and women in the plural concluding so and now and now it's about you about the audience so we we we'll go to the website and hope it works with the with the wi-fi so let's check okay so they're now discussing how to get to the website um they just hope it works and now we'll have a q a a pretty long one Hi. Okay. So I'll just uh, moderate on your Q&A. So if you want to try the tool, uh, you can go to the microphones. Um, and Signal Angel has been seen. Okay. So until now, you just see my uh, background, my desktop background. That's rather boring and not good. I'll well, they you know try the tool and check whether it works and whether they get it onto the beamer. Let's hope they do. And it's just ah, the joys of technology. <coughs> okay, so now it works and now they are on. Okay, well, so microphone two. The idea is, <coughs> you tell us words and we look at them and then we'll have a little... What's your first... What's the first proposal? Oh, speed limit. And there are actually multiple words for speed in German, so they have like speed limit l one, which is tempo for speed. Oh, you see, th it has been there before, it's not a new topic, obviously. And now they are trying the second word for speed, which is Geschwindigkeit, so maybe let's say speed and velocity. Um, so now they're checking for... Uh, so now they also have to uh, check for German grammar, which has cases, so they have to use it in different grammatical forms. Um, so they see if they get something else for velocity. Uh, it seems that this is a rather old debate, nothing new. Uh, obviously, it never really worked. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's about some uh, big industries who uh, don't care for that. But um, Okay, Signal Angel is now. I have questions from, from the chat. Let, let, let's make two words. Okay, so freedom is the first one. And uh, again, speed limit, but they will... Okay, let, let's say now freedom and tempo limit and correlate and speed limit and, and correlation. So let's see if this correlates. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, maybe maybe a bit in parts, but mm, uh, let's say a, a rather uh, now let's say freedom and security. Oh, and now suddenly uh, you see uh, freedom loses against security. Uh, we're sorry, but yeah, 
number microphone number two. <laughs> a gender specific insult uh, used against women. I would be interested in emancipated. There is a emance. That's a German swear word for an emancipated woman. Feminazi. Feminazi would be a good one. Emance. Here we are. Okay, so there have just been like five cases of emance mentioned in Parliament. So it can be used as a, as as an insult, but it's not necessary. What would be really interesting in that case would be like the, the the specific points in the in the protocol because as there have only been five uh, occasions, this would be really interesting to see when they used it, if it's actually used as an insult or not. Okay, so now microphone number six. Hi. Uh, surveillance. Surveillance. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's he said how it's about the surveillance, and they said, well, I think it's bad about surveillance. Ooh, it's a lot of mentions. Oh, well, and you see, it's been talked about pretty often. And very big peak in the 70s, and mid 70s. Everyone knows that, end of the 70s. So what was the first biggest discussion? Yeah, it was about like the census. That's when they talked about surveillance because uh, suddenly everyone thought the state wants to know who they are. But um, a short remark. If you look at the scale to the right, it's not a very big debate because you see on the right that you just have two to four mentions uh, per 100,000 words. So that's not very, very often debate talked about. Okay, now microphone number eight in the back. War and 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 use in war. Okay, let's say war. You see that this is war, but it's not the war of the Bundeswehr, of the German army, it's the war of others. Uh, if you really look for like uh, the wars of... Uh, if you have to look for, for uh, what, the, what the German army does, you have to look for euphemisms like uh, stabilization uh, uh, mo missions, yeah, stabilization missions or peace missions. So this is what the German army does. Uh, you can check for Afghanistan. Um, So you have Afghanistan mission, so again, rather small. You see that those debates about where the you send the, the German army is not that big as you could hope that they talk about it. Microphone number seven. Uh, three, <coughs> the reunification, D D GDR, and so-called GDR. Okay. Let's see that. So, you see that. well, the so-called DDR is a bit difficult. So, because uh, we don't know if engrams don't work that well. So maybe there is no s no there is no so-called DDR. Uh, it doesn't find it. But it's a problem of the of the tool. Engrams are a bit difficult to build. Uh, I have to admit that. Um, Okay, let's see, SBZ. There's the Soviet, um, occupation zone. Yeah, Soviet occupation zone, and then maybe like Eastern so zone or East zone. Yeah, it's also not that. But you see, like DDR is... Use cyber versus the internet. <laughs> okay, s yeah, cyber versus the internet. Ah, you see, cyber is, hasn't been a huge topic. Uh, cyber security, oh God. Oh God. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, so we add this up like cyber, cyber security, maybe cyber space, of course. That really hurts. Uh, it, it's rather it's rather uh, scarce. So we just have 0 0.8 and then you see a new land that's very... New land is something very German. Uh, it's said a lot of th about... The Chancellor Merkel called cyberspace. This is all new territory for us. In German that's called Neuland and it's become a meme. Yeah. Okay, now you have it's, it's rather, but it's rather a niche thing. So you see, uh, per 100,000, there's a very little uh, mentions. But uh, other questions, we still have time. We also had some time for more. Okay, number three. In connection with fake news, um, the, uh, um, Ente, which is a German word for uh, fake news, an old... F Okay, you see it's very rare, but uh, something else if you want to compare it uh, using just newspaper. 
and ra newspaper, combining newspaper, radio, TV, internet. and internet. And if you plot those against each other, you see well that you see just how the media changes. Um, so newspapers, TV, and radio. Uh, well, newspaper and TV go down. Radio is well stays, but uh, internet microphone one. I'd be interested. And how often do they say um, the foreigners? Yeah. So there's one word. For it's it's like just external territory is one German word. So there's a lot of that, but, uh, but more interesting is about uh, foreigners, not foreign countries. Um, and you see, this is oh, yeah, interesting. In the 90s, what could that be? Well, then we are against uh, asylum seekers. And yeah, there are several words for asylum seekers. It's not very, very often used. Uh, it's actually asylum seeker. Yeah, yeah it, the word is application. That's yeah. It, it for the German, it's like asylum applic application. Google and Facebook. <laughs> okay, yeah, the, uh, Google and Facebook exist. We've heard about that. Mm, you see. No. Uh, Facebook wins as usual. Microphone number four. Uh, someone asked about Twitter and they said Twitter, there's no Twitter, is totally irrelevant. Sorry. I would like to know solidarity. And and my thesis is that if we refer to, uh, only to the Polish organization and not to solidarity in our politics. It could be true. We see here if we correlate it with Poland, we see, yeah, there's it seems to be a correlation. At least uh, the first peaks start with this, could be with uh, the, the number of mentions of Poland. Um, Sexual terror or sexual force against women. Sex, sexual violence. Okay, as a bigram, as a two gram, this works. So you see here, uh, very rare, unfortunately. Uh, 0 0.4. Very, very rare topic. Um, we think that violence against women won't work because it's a three gram, but let's check we don't have any uh, three grams now no there's no uh, violence against but there's like uh, just um, the word domestic is violence. domestic violence yeah domestic violence that works uh, you see interesting that's to different it's like different at different times you have sexual violence and uh, domestic violence and then you see like uh, just rape wow yeah um, I think that this 1995 and 1997 you had a bigger debate it seems like there's a bigger debate about sexual violence as I mentioned for me I think the rest one is for the for the uh, refugees in 1915 ah sorry as an explanation for the debate in the 1990s um, they made um, marital rape rape in Germany so that's why there was this big debate in the 1990s. Okay, I didn't understand the question, sorry, but um, yeah, it's now like digitalization versus automation. So because I think one of them switched the other, so you see automation doesn't, doesn't exist, actually. And then it's about like robots. Somebody says robots, robotization. I think have robotization, but yeah, there's robots, but also very rarely. Uh, so Parliament doesn't talk about tech uh, about tech <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, Schutzlücke, that's a space um, la lack of uh, protection, darknet, and video surveillance. So it doesn't. So you see, darknet and uh, is not correlated. But darknet is in general whenever it's about like uh, w uh, expansion of uh, executive rights. So what the executive branch does do. Okay, so now you have uh, video surveillance. So I see, and then what else? 
um, like ED, so which is electronic data, blah, blah, blah. So it's a German word for IT. Mm -hmm. Dann Mikrofon Microphone also, number one. Da wir die Freiheit und die Sicherheit schon hatten, würde ich jetzt mal gerne die Gleichheit, die Gleichberechtigung. We had freedom, let's see, uh, equal rights and equality. Yeah. Equality, equal rights. Berechtigung mit einem R. Okay, and whoop, but there's an R, no, no two E's. Okay, so now they're making now they're making typos. Uh, That's yeah. He's he's a professor for linguistics, not for writing, not for spelling. Okay, so I see uh, like, and now it's like uh, equality and equal positioning, but I don't think that there's a word in English. Um, very German. Very German word. Yeah. Yeah. You see that this is. Yeah, it's not very very concisive. But what, what was 1949 about this? This could be just when the the well Germany came came back, and maybe when you had like two German states, and so maybe this has to do something. I I suspect it has nothing to do with men and women. So it's you, uh, maybe now you can see about like uh, housewife. If you see, maybe it's the same thing. No, you see here. Okay, now let's say uh, like uh, houseman instead of housewife. No. Well, again a typo, but uh, well, most likely the. Uh, yeah. yeah, you see. Oh well, there's there's one peak, and nine ninety, end of the nineties. When Merkel became. There's one. <laughs> yeah, but you see, it's it's very. That's when Merkel became chancellor. Any further questions to the to the talk? Do we have questions for the talk? Because then I would uh, the signal angel. Yeah. How far can we differentiate between uh, change of uh, language in the Bundestag and the change of work f um, methods? That's very difficult to answer because also those who are currently protocoling, we of course ask those people who are doing those protocols. But the problem is. Um, the Parliament's protocols used to be much shorter before, so they did it differently than now. Um, by now they protocol much more, much more exact, and uh, so that's what it seems like. And we don't know more about that, unfortunately. For example, uh, if you see about the new uh, spelling reform that was done at some point, and you can see in the protocols that at this point uh, the new one, the new spelling was introduced, and um, it seems like um, as they wrote, write very quickly that sometimes the tradition uh, stayed and they still use the old spelling. So this is sometimes. Uh, difficult, yeah, because they're using a quick way of writing stenography, uh, stenography and so that's okay. Signal angel. You had a couple of interesting correlations. Um, How did you start doing that? Okay, so we just uh, y used hundreds of, of, of terms through the tool. And so you can see like uh, suggestions and that on the bottom so you have uh, like uh, interesting things that seemed interesting to us when we worked through all those things but the question was about correlations between between uh, different terms but there is no correlation we just see similar curves we didn't um, like calculate anything and we did this automatically what could be interesting graphs but and some of those suggestions come from of on the bottom come from this uh, microphone. Yeah, what is the larger problem, extremism or right wing extremism? Well, um, I don't know if the s if the mentions in the in the parliament really are can answer this question. So okay, but I want to know what the what the parliament is more interested about. Uh, Maybe if you have even a, like a change from radicalism to um, extremism as words. So do you see some of those? So now again, they have to use the tool. I don't see anything. Yeah, now they're on the right slide, oh, on the right window. Okay, so radicalism versus extremism. What was it? No, it was, no, no, no. Left extremism and right extremism. 
Yeah, that now they put in le left extremism and right extremism, but I think the question was about radicalism versus extremism, but uh, whatever. We'll see it. Okay, you see... Uh, uh, so, and if you use terror as a whole, um, yeah. So terrorism is like bigger, and now you have uh, like you have like radicalism, left radicalism versus right radicalism. Um, and let's see if there's a difference. Yeah, there's. Uh, it's rather very few mentions only and now you're checking for the right radicalism um, you also has yeah, also 421 a bit more so you see it's a lot more right radicalism used as a word so again now microphone four but please a question there is no question okay microphone number seven You sh showed that a lot of themes were older than the people present here in the public. Um, sorry, I'm very different to read, to listen. What's the median age? Okay, so they just said 42. So no, they think that you see it's it's good that you have the same topics or yeah, you see that the parliament um, is talking about the topics the people also talk about, so which is actually not bad. So the parliament is like representing what pe what is moving people and that's what it should do. And on the other hand, just because the debate has been done already, um, this definitely doesn't mean that it has been solved. And so you have to re, well, discuss it and reevaluate it like talking about uh, looking at climate before that they they talked about environment which is very local it's german forest german soil german water now we talk about climate which is really better because it means we, re we we've realized that what we do is not doesn't just uh, affect our immediate environment but really the whole planet and that's good i don't know if that really answers the questions thanks I think that's it with questions. We're at the end of time. Um, so big applause again for this great talk. Thanks. Okay, so this is goodbye from... A